All right, so Pamela Anderson, like a couple of years ago, had a very rational take on the whole Me Too mishkas and such. Mishkas? mishkas. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> and, me? Yes, uh, she had uh, the whole, all that hullabaloo surrounding Me Too. She had a lot to say about it that was quite rational, but she's walking those comments back because she's got a book to, to publish mm, and a book to sell and a TV show to sell. So now she has to take back what she said. So it says, uh, Pamela Anderson says she has regrets over her take on Me Too. This was all her take was? She said to Megyn Kelly in 2017, you know what you're getting into if you go to a hotel room alone. <laughs> Is that all she said, How or was there more she? to it? How she, dare she? Was, she also talked about being a survivor of sex abuse herself from her childhood. Yes. So, if anything, she has room to talk about does it more than anyone else. Does she mean alone with a person? Does so this, she mean, she's saying that she agreed with her mom's take on it. She says, I can even take it a step further. My mother would tell me, and I think this is the kind of feminism I grew up with, it takes two to tango. If someone answers the door in a hotel room and you're going for, jo for a job interview, don't go in. But if you do go in, get the job. That's weird. That's <laughs> weird to say to your daughter, that for sure. Odd, no, no. But if you do go in, then just absolutely bone him for a job okay, like, but she's just yes but like are you gonna bone him in a bad way so you don't get the job like th now you've bowed a random dude and don't you have nothing to show for don't say that to your it. daughter though like, <laughs> that was a polite weird. way to put the if you do go in then the first option was don't go in she's sex, saying she's like, saying be good at you she's saying like you know be prepared for the job interview yeah like she's saying it's don't just, go it's in it's just not the kind oh of job interview gosh. most people go do to do not go in but <laughs> and she admitted that that do. was a horrible thing to say but that's how i was wow uh so, so like here's here's my favorite part about this it's like i think there in no world was it ever bad advice to be like if you go to a job interview and the dude's wearing a robe, don't go in. Like, we're what is it with these dudes in robes around Pamela Anderson? Like <laughs> Tim Allen just wearing nothing but a robe on the set of <laughs> Home Improvement. I, right. Like, well, it's Hollywood. It's degeneracy. What's it's awesome. Going it's hilarious. On? These people. I mean, are that's awful. what frustrated me about Me Too all along is that it was a Hollywood movement addressing a, a, a uniquely Hollywood problem mm -hmm. that then got turned around to accuse everybody else in society. And in this case, what I, what the the problem. The problem I have with her walking this back is the advice she's giving is good. So uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're marching forward closer and closer to a day where you go, if you go to a job interview and there's a, and there's a guy in a robe, go in. He, by the power of feminism and smashing, so of the and smashing of the patriarchy, just assume he won't do anything. In mm. the real world, your eyes tell you things that are being seen in front of you and you know that well, this is a job interview. And then you think back to, 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 to every job interview you've been, ever been on. You're like, well, in none of my other job interviews did I go to a hotel room, nor in any of my other job interviews did the person interviewing me wear a bathrobe. Right. I think something about this is fundamentally different from every other job I've applied to. Maybe I should take precautions. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are pushing towards a world if where they're man. supposed to ignore that because we want to live in a joke of a society, uh, a joke of a, of a utopian society where you just assume that he has no ill intention towards you which right. is ridiculous mm. it's awfully convenient how the me too movement ended up benefiting the worst men the most predatory men in hollywood yeah. the ones who probably weren't named and shamed at all nope. the ones who remain in positions of power to this day they will never get called out me too actually ended up running cover for them yeah and the the skeletal organizations that were made for it like time's up Silencing her words here, it just puts us further into this, uh, to this weird echo chamber where people say, maybe we should teach men not to be, not to oh, rape yeah. women. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we know that. We do. Everyone we knows that, that, people, that we do teach that's, that. That saying that makes the assumption that you think people commit our word out of ignorance that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what they think. They're, like, th they're that delusional. Well, yeah, these same true. people also don't want anything to do with religion. It's like, well, buddy. Dude, that's when they also teach that in religion. Yeah. It's like, well, first of all, we are yeah. teaching young men. Like, if you've got a mother and a father, you've surely had that lesson at home, unless you come from a truly Well, it's something that often doesn't even need to be made situation. explicit, mm, right? right? Like, don't R word it people. Does. Like, it does. Like, when you're a young, young boy, like, n yes, maybe that specific that. act, but like, 
you do need to be taught like i had to be taught to open the door for people sure. like the elderly and women really just all people like if you're going mm-hmm. to, into a restaurant into a, a brett, shop brett has a s- traumatic story about about holding about open the door what for you just someone. get stuck opening the door for like a couple minutes That's oh happened to me, yeah, like it was like one of the early <laughs> moments that that showed me how far society red had pill, fallen if you will. yeah sort of like i me timid me who walks like with his head down in his phone or whatever he's doing and always holds the door for everyone because i was raised to be polite right. and i hold the door and i and i'm kind of just waiting for an extra like long period of time and i finally look up and it's like a girl like just an awful <laughs> blue-haired feminist of a woman oh, no. standing in front of me she didn't actually have blue hair but her, her attitude was that of a, of a blue yeah, haired harpy and she says the next time you want to hold the door open for a perfectly able-bodied woman how about this don't yeah and then wow. walk right past her like so she still utilized the door wow. that i held yep. open for mm-hmm. dude and dude. i'm just like me who's just like i didn't know you. like what am i supposed to say i didn't know you were a chick that, i didn't know happened? you were a woman was that, was that in the midwest that sounds that's like the, midwest. the best that's, reply i, I didn't know say. you were female yeah i'm right. sorry i was on a college campus so i guess it could be that's 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 not society though that person that woman <laughs> was just absolutely insane there these people are getting turned out into society i thought he was gonna yeah. say yeah like i didn't hold the door open for someone who was like 50 feet away it was the distance it was just like he was in no man's land like he's close <laughs> enough that i could see his eyes but he's far enough away it's kind of weird yeah. for me just standing here i thought you were gonna say someone bashed you for like not opening the door no no the opposite all you did That's was ridiculous. not assume her gender yes yep and, and how dare you and yeah, i was basically seriously. just like what the f- just happened <laughs> like, <laughs> as you would as a normal like or like reasonably able-bodied person would do would hold the door for another person who is reasonably able-bodied it was kind of like the thing where it's like they were far enough away where it's like a far enough distance where it's maybe kind of awkward right. but it's just uh, how i was raised you know charlie barons yeah yeah he makes that joke about that like literally numerous times about how he's the, like sitting there waiting you're for, holding like, you're like, yeah. Dude, it's like yeah he's there was actually like him. a it's skit the other day of like so i don't funny. remember who the comedian was where he holds the door open for somebody and just like it's a never ending Dude, like it's, <laughs> it, it's happened yeah like, i've had like two three minutes of me just holding so like i yeah. chose the you've wrong door away. the the like the guys like, or get a door prop it's like it's mm-hmm. like 15 people but like there's also like two strollers so it's oh. just like you know it's a whole <laughs> thing if you see the stroller coming you can't the guy was was like the the one, he's one of the dudes who works with Trevor Wallace and like by the time it's done there's like an ambulance taking a body out and <laughs> yeah, they're like and, and then finally like a college graduation starts coming out the it door always, always and, like he's, and he's forced to shake the hands of the kids coming out of the yeah. I, I saw a video on Twitter Funny. actually yesterday uh, after that girl doing the hip thrusts in the gym posted that video calling mm. out that dude mm, calling yeah, him creepy yeah, yeah. for just existing oh, yeah. in the same room as her mm-hmm there was another video that got posted of this girl who needed someone to spot her and was like about to get injured. Oh, and she, she was squatting? like calling out, what? and she was like, "Hello, hey, oh, yeah, yeah, hey." Nobody wanted to help her. Excuse no, me, excuse not. me. Even though there are a bunch of people around, they're not responding yep. because of this culture of fear that right. has been cultivated between men and women, only because celebrities aren't able to control themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's this has gone farther to like. I mean, this started before this. You remember that old story about like nobody would help the woman being assaulted on the train because they don't want to get involved oh, because yeah. they can get sued. Like yep. it's just I like a. See, it's a, I don't like that argument. I don't think people are truly thinking like if I interact, I might get sued yeah. i think people are one they don't know what to do and that's scary mm. and, and it's scary themselves people are they really don't... scared to do things in situations like yeah. that they're yeah. really like everyone that says has like, nothing oh, to do I with would, the loss i would do this and the keyboard warrior saying i would blah 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 blah. It's, people are way <laughs> more uh timid uh, timid and yeah. uh, more afraid to uh, uh, in it, those situations because action like that is it just takes... social anxiety or does it have to do with it's... the you need it's to tension practice. between Both. the sexes right well, now. Well, think about oh, I, I think in that think particular about situation, the, it's definitely that. Think about the video we watched the other day that I wanted to do for Cringe of the Day, where the girls like attacking the dude and the dude's backing up. He's like, "I don't want to hit you. I don't want to hit you." And everybody just mm-hmm. stares and watches until she actually attacks him, and he has to fight back. And then they get right. involved in, in yeah. try to stop and him. The bad guy. And he's the bad guy. Are they just watching? Or are they they're going like, like, "How this? dare you?" Yeah. Like, after she- how dare you? You protect yourself. And there was legitimately brain dead zero so, IQ like like lukewarm brained people in the comments saying like he should have just right. ran to his car well, like, I, what just, the hell? I think we I was, need to go ahead I was gonna say I was watching Mercade a lot and it's interesting that in certain states it might be f- Florida like for self-defense like you can't instigate that's not self-defense right. so like if that girl you know like who's picking on a guy who's obviously much bigger and stronger than her mm. keeps punching him just to, or like or if she's like you won't fight me and again it's an antagonizing him and then he does swing that's not self-defense like 
Yeah, like, you can only you can only like on her part, you know. Yeah, no, you can only you can only like if you're you actually a, assaulted or um, okay. then remember assault doesn't mean like. But it's not like that everywhere, yeah, which is w- totally. why I w- was bringing this up. It's you should like learn it's, your state laws, by the way, guys. Learn your state laws. Um, it's, important. it's not like that everywhere. So a lot of times these women, like when you see videos like that, they're raised like knowing like guys can't touch me. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's and I mean that's there's a whole no world star hip hop subculture. Yeah, of, like literally. women basically abusing men in public and men having to just sit there and take it. Yeah. It is yeah. literally like but it's like it is a video it's a whole it's a I whole video sub. My favorite yeah. videos are totally. when it's like two women that get into a fight, and it's not even the fighting that's like interesting. It's all the men in the background; they're just smiling, like oh yeah, like, that's like, what here, I said. Like this, here we go. Are they, are they not, not even anything, trying to pull them this? apart? No, no, like their boyfriends are the ones trying to pull them apart, but all the World friends star. of the boyfriends are just like like yeah. But it's so casual <laughs> too. Even the guys pulling the women apart, they're like, come on, come on, babe. Do you like, guys feel like we're becoming a more violent society in general? Um. Or angry? I no. think it's. I think it's not like it's. It's really that particular. will die with Gen Z, when with uh, Gen Z and, and Gen Alpha because they'll be too scared to talk to each well, other in public. <laughs> I'm gonna compare so our society <laughs> to like oh, like COVID nineteen, right? So like in the beginning, yeah. COVID mm-hmm. was a lot deadlier, uh, less inf- uh, in- infectious, and as time's gone on, like all viruses become more infectious, become more less, infectious deadly. less deadly. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening to our society's like temper and mood, right? Like back. 200 years ago people just shoot you in the street right like you have well, a beef with yeah, the guy down the street of. you're gonna duel it out i mean not necessarily you know. it was it's, no it's, but you were likely yeah. like you could die any day yeah you could you like, it, it was more likely but it wasn't it's not exactly like that 1883 thing that's currently on i forget what it is my point is pop culture stuff. maybe like interactions were less common but they were more violent people like, are more psychologically violent now violent. you're more likely mm, to get into true, petty little true, arguments true. and petty little mm. fights but you're less likely to you're more get... likely to have someone record you yeah and people right. are more and people are more it happens willing more often but it's less serious to psychologically abuse you digitally than they mm. will to physically harm you and i would rather like most like i've talked to a lot of people it would be better to be physically harmed than to be like psychologically abused for for days weeks months on end online Mm, like true. in a lot of ways not in the context of like oh you can just turn it off but where you get endless ha- me- endless hate messages and every time like i would never want to be a politician or a celebrity now because anytime they post anything they're immediately bombarded with comments well, that are obscene it's like the chinese water uh torture mm-hmm. trap it's like it doesn't hurt it's the dripping of the water it's that psychological. drives you insane mm-hmm. yeah. i i also had a question i i don't know if you guys are representative of the male population since we uh thanks for thank you for not group, assuming my gender man. we are we're <laughs> probably we are probably at this table more informed on current events all right so um Take this with a grain of salt, but do you guys feel like Me Too or the consequences, the aftermath of it has changed the way you interact with the opposite sex? Yes, yes, definitely. And I think it was, it's also one of not, not the only component, but a huge component of why the dating scene is basically non existent now. Is hmm. it? Uh, f- when you compare it to how it was like 15 years ago, 15 years hmm. ago, you didn't have apps. True. That's, that's what that's, I'm saying. That's, that's, that was, that's another component. I don't consider that true dating. The smartphone. You're interacting on the internet. I do that with yeah. everybody. Well, supposedly you use the app to find someone and meet yes. them. But yeah, but I, that I doesn't mean, happen a lot of the time. I think most people find failure than find success on those apps. I yeah, mean, true. I, I just don't think... It, anyway, mm-hmm. like I think that combined with the Me Too movement has made... like. There's you see every day women saying like on TikTok they're posting about how sad and lonely and they just want a man to take care of them mm-hmm. and then yeah. this and that. Guys don't post as much as that. It's just the nature of being a yeah. guy, you know. But it's the same thing. There's a lot of guys that are single. Like they just get called incels, so like yeah, they're even totally. less likely to talk about it. I got a I got a you know? question to run by you guys. Uh, so there's the the trope of like millennials hate answering the phone and then it got worse as we went on. Like millennials hated answering the phone. Gen Z, like I watched a skit the other day. It's like uh, a Gen X person answers the phone, and then a millennial just like, hello, 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 like, and then, like, like they wait for like the last ring, hoping that they pick up right as it goes dead, and so they can say they answered the phone, but they didn't really. Mm. Oh yeah. Do you yeah. think that part of that is because of the student loan debt that all of the millennials got into? <laughs> they didn't want to answer phone <laughs> calls from debt. Collectors. I don't know what that is because I, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I, I don't like just, texting. I, I like I want you to call me so I can get it over get over 
yeah. with the conversation I faster. Agree. Yeah, I don't like texting. Like, like, do you? Th- but do you think that that could be a thing? Like, people are, like they're just like, I don't need to be bothered by all the debt collectors today. Therefore, I'm going to be scared of the phone. Like, because they never, nobody ever specifies. Are you scared of answering the phone for somebody you know, or is it? But are you scared of answering order the phone? Pizza. Well, okay, yeah, so yeah, that is like, that is emba- I, that is embarrassing. I do agree that that's part of it. Because, like, when I used to have to talk to vendors and stuff all the time, um, yes, I had a work phone, but, like, it gets exhausting telling 20, 30 people every day, like, the same, like, like small talk spiel and, like, yeah, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. letting them down, like, no, sorry, we're all good on this week. We don't need to buy your stuff. And it's like, they'll cold call you a lot. Courier you know, 62, that's all they have to do. Courier six two six says it's always scam likely, and as soon as you answer, they scan your active apps. Uh, but scam likely is like something that's been created in the last couple of years, though. Yeah, that wasn't totally. the thing before that. Like whoever invented that should get the Nobel Peace Prize. Someone should <laughs> rename. You know, I like the idea True. of like pranking someone by changing a contact's name. Oh, that's scam evil. Likely. No, there's uh, there's like there's people who have done that. Like where like this dude, this girl found out her boyfriend was uh, was cheating on her, so he change the girl he's been like he's been sending like dirty Smart. messages to like he changed his mom's number to her name so that wow. he would send like effed up messages to his mom oh wow <laughs> wow dude Jeez. yeah getting other people's phones is, is a whole thing yeah you know it's it's a it's it's weird it's a slippery slope well, with scam you- calls what i do is i just continue the conversation with them and just rope them along to waste their time because I know they scam elderly people <laughs> oh, yeah. out of their wealth. You guys know uh, Pierogi? Uh, yes. Yes, I love that guy's channel because oh, he just he's just a genius. He's so good they at go keeping his conversations. In, it's wonderful to watch. It's wonderful to watch. In that skit I was talking about, it was like it was all the generations answer the phone and it was boomers and he goes, it was that Nigerian prince again. He sure, see, <laughs> he sure needs a lot of money and then she nice hangs up the phone. Man. What a nice young man. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.